the moon challenge continues so how is it going friends did you get a successful look at the moon yesterday i'm sure in the beginning phases of this challenge the moon will be unmissable it is quite an easy target in the sky especially on day four the crescent moon was about 70 to 18 percent illuminated that's growing fast of course these numbers i should remind you are may differ a little bit across the world so people who start their day earlier than us may have seen it slightly lesser illuminated the people who will reach evening later than india for example in europe or the usa would probably see the moon a little bit more illuminated well that doesn't matter because if you did see the moon yesterday it would have been a lovely sight in the sky and here is a lovely picture to prove the point another time lapse something that i described to you yesterday in which you can see the moon right from when it was spotted early in the evening uh, till a late time in the evening when it went more towards the horizon this is of course the west where you can see the twilight proving that and this tiny dot that you see moving here is Venus. Remember I told you yesterday that the uh, moon, crescent moon will be joining the crescent Venus in the sky and my friend has clicked a beautiful picture so he not just uh, clicked a picture with the crescent moon but he also pointed his telescope at the Venus and he could see the beautiful crescent of Venus. So it was a day of two crescents in the sky. It was a beautiful sight. I wish we had telescopic eyes and we could check out both the crescents in the sky yesterday. Of course, if we had telescopic eyes, then I'd rather go and check the moon itself with a telescope. And you know how it looked yesterday? This is a picture of the breathtaking moon as it would have looked through a telescope. I cannot but envy my friend who had a telescope available and could behold this sight through it. He also used his camera and has shared it with me. Please, if you are getting such beautiful pictures, please feel free to share them with us and we'd be happy if we could feature them on our series. Now let's turn to see what features uh, we can identify on this picture. So of course, a uh, reminder of the terms, mare is a name, a Latin name for seas, which were large flat areas noticed by uh, people using the telescope in the early times. And they could not, of course, uh, make sense of what these areas were. So they thought these are probably seas on the moon. Of course, we know now they are not. Uh, craters are big holes like this one I pointed out yesterday which were caused by something hitting the surface of the moon, which is not a rare thing to happen. So there are many uh, times new craters discovered on the moon. Let's see. So yesterday, as a reminder, we saw Mare Crisium, which is the sea of crisis. We also saw the crater Langrenus. Uh, we won't be using the uh, word crater in front of the name of every crater. Although for Mare, which are smaller in number, which are lesser in number, we do use the word Mare. So these were the two objects we could see on day three in the uh, detailed picture. But let's see what else was visible yesterday. So other lovely deep craters became visible, like uh, the crater Geminus here. You can see, of course, many craters queuing up right from this big Mare Crisium towards this side, which is the north of the moon. This is Endymion, another uh, deep crater on the edge, which got visible. This was not visible yesterday. It's just that well, because of the rotation of the moon uh, and also its revolution along the orbit of around the Earth, uh, these things are getting illuminated more and more. Other than that, something I got reminded of, which I missed yesterday, were two seas, the sea of waves and the sea of serpents. I'm not sure why these uh, seas were named such that they would invoke a sense of fear maybe. Okay, but this is this crisis here, the serpents here, waves here. I'm not sure what happened. 
I can also notice that a big chunk of the moon is not visible. So in fact beyond this uh, Mare Crisium we have a big crater called Gauss and that in this uh, cycle of the moon is not visible. So we'll discuss this one day why some parts of the moon become visible uh, during certain cycles and during certain other cycles they do not uh, get seen. So Gauss is missing here and we can just about uh, spot uh, sea of serpents and sea of waves. Then we have a big flattish area coming up into view here which will become more prominent uh, the next day and this is Mare Fecunditatis, the sea of fertility. Again uh, it's a large flat area and now it's the beginning of the large mares coming into the view. Uh, this one will have a lot of uh, beautiful features which you know you can see a little bit of glimpse here at the edge. Have a better look at it without me pre being present. And for the people who are fans of science fiction, let me just point out a tiny crater in the Mare Crisium which is named Picard. Anybody who's a fan of Star Trek will remember this and this crater is probably named after John Picard. So hope you're enjoying the long look at the beautiful site that was yesterday's crescent. This is just the edge of it and we've been able to capture only more of the northern part of the moon. Let us see if we in the next few days can capture the whole of the crescent and share all the features along the edge where the light and the dark shadows are present. We will now show you a glimpse of what will be visible today uh, if you go out in the evening. It's day five and uh, I have picked this picture because you can see the moon. It is uh, close to Venus, still close to Venus. Yesterday it was here and you can see the bright star Aldebaran which is a part of Taurus, the constellation. You will also to the east of it see the constellation Orion with the, the star which is currently in news. Betelgeuse, you will see the Orion's belt and Rigel as well and then you would come to the brightest star in the sky that is Sirius. So you may be wondering where I got this beautiful image from. Well it's from a software that I have been a fan of for a long time and it is widely used by many many amateur astronomers to find out what is going to happen in the sky. It plots artificially the sky at any given time and date. So you can go to stellarium.org and download it. Uh, why I picked this picture today is because on the logo of Stellarium you can see a crescent moon which is probably the same phase that is going to be there on day 5. So I hope you uh, get to see the same face and enjoy the beauty of the moon. And don't forget to let us know how your moon challenge is going. Please do tag us when you share your experiences or your uh, photographs online. Do use the tag hashtag moon challenge and of course please tag us so that we come to know about what your experience is like. We'll be back tomorrow with more details, more pictures of today's moon. Till then, all the best.